So yeah, INTPs, also known as the ardent or the engineer type. <laughs> INTPs do not make it very easy uh, to be in a relationship with. The thing is, though, it's hilarious because every INTP out there thinks that they're making it easy to be in a relationship with them. But the reality of the situation is they're really actually not. I mean, INTP men especially have to deal with the fact that a lot of women out there, especially women in um, Western society, and especially women that they are most compatible with, those women have a really, really hard time willing to take the risk on an INTP. Naturally, the men that they are the most compatible with also really struggle taking uh, the, a similar risk uh, and having a relationship with an INTP woman. We're going to be discussing some of those risks here real quick before we actually get into the rules, because I would like to dispel a myth, a myth that often INTPs end up having within their own heads. It's kind of like a, an ego investment. And I'm really concerned, really concerned that this, uh, this ego investment ultimately is one of the main reasons why their relationships end up in failure or never even take place to begin with. It's like they're setting themselves up for failure to a point. And I, I don't like that. I think every one of the 16 tides should have an opportunity to be in a relationship and much less a successful relationship. I mean, the mission uh, for the... Uh, The mission for uh, this, this channel, ultimately, uh, is to end fatherlessness, which means in order to end fatherlessness, people have to have healthy relationships. It's kind of a requirement, like, obviously. The thing is, though, is that most people, when they consider fatherlessness, they really make it about fathers sticking it around, whereas they don't actually analyze why fathers are leaving in the first place, especially when... 80% of divorces out there are initiated by women, INTP or not. And regardless, it's really important to be discussing these topics because if we don't discuss these topics, then the fatherlessness problem is just going to get worse. And then we're going to find ourselves under a big, terrible curse. Now, a lot of people don't really agree with me on that, and that's fine. You don't have to agree with me because I often come off like some sort of doomsday prophet, but the particular prophecy in which I heavily buy into because I've packed my entire life purpose on this prophecy is Malachi chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. In the last days, I'll send my prophet Elijah to you. He will turn the hearts of fathers to their sons and the hearts of sons to their fathers, or else I will strike the land with a decree of utter destruction or strike the land with a curse, depending on who you actually talk to, and uh, whatever biblical translation is. Now, I may not be the prophet Elijah, but his mission is mine. In order to actually accomplish that, masculinity has to return. And in order for that uh, to happen, men really just have to get to a place when it comes to relationships, because a place where they understand that they're actually getting something out of it, because a lot of men are not actually getting much out of a relationship. Most people actually just point, especially INTPs and INTP men, which is point to, well, you know, isn't sexuality the whole point? Like, no. No, it's not. I mean, it's easy. to just, you, you can have sex with anybody. Literally. Just go on Tinder, go on Hinge, go on Bumble. Doesn't matter. Like, you know, especially, you know, if you're an INTP, you have SE Trickster. So, SE Tricksters kind of have this issue where they can kind of be in a sexual relationship with just about anybody. So it's actually really, really easy for this particular archetype to end up having a very shallow uh, sexual relationship with basically just about anybody and any age group. 
it doesn't matter how tall or sh or how short or or how fat and unhealthy these people are it will just happen and we'll be explaining a lot more as to why that is the case when we talk about deadly sins in the uh, deadly sins section of the premium lectures behind our paywall which i highly recommend we got two of them done the soul temple deadly sins are done and they're available right now deadly sin of wrath and the deadly sin of lust which applies to enfp istj estp and infj currently so that's the soul temple but in terms of the body temple well the body temple is going to have to wait and INTPs are a member of the body temple. And with that, you know, being said, when it comes to like body temple related issues, their main deadly sin is gluttony. And honestly, like gluttony ends up becoming a huge, huge problem for INTPs. And gluttony, in my opinion, is probably the number one reason why it's so hard to have a meaningful, long-lasting, uh, fulfilling relationship with an INTP. I mean, for the men, you have this you have this issue where, like, okay, yeah, the whole playing video games in your mother's basement archetype or meme, basically, because that's that's really what it is. It's it's a meme. It's it's a meme, and this meme is basically every woman's nightmare especially like an ntj woman like entjs which is their golden pair intj women because ntj women especially in western society guess what are very career focused it's a huge career related problem a career related issue and oftentimes a lot of people just don't understand you know what that means and i'm not here to to um, to bag on career focused women. I, I am, uh, I mean, I, I totally get it. Sorry, I had to set my do not disturb on because if someone calls me, I lose the lecture, which would really suck. Thank God for Apple Watch, right? But yeah, uh, gluttony gets in the way. And that's not to say that, you know, gluttony doesn't get in the way with the women. It definitely does. It's just the thing is, is that INTPs end up basically worshiping at the idol of food or the idol of video games or some particular thing. They find themselves in the situation where, are, where they are consuming more than they produce on a regular basis. And this is, in my opinion, the central issue, which ends up ruining relationships that INTPs end up having because oftentimes these types uh, doesn't matter, you know, they are given by NTJ women, NTJ men, they are given um, ultimatums, huge ultimatums about their relationship to the point where their relationship will end. It will end because they're given these ultimatums. Hey, you're going to have to choose me or your video games. You're going to have to choose me or your job, you know, like, because they can even be gluttonous with their job, etc. You know, and INTPs end up often thinking that they're doing you know, this, um, this great service, you know, they, they assume that with our TI hero, that they're actually very easy to be in a relationship with. But the reality of the situation is, is that they're not. I mean, look at Elon Musk. He works really hard, constantly chasing his purpose in life, which he has in effect become gluttonous over. Not necessarily a bad thing. Gluttony can lead to great things, great things like SpaceX, you know, and Starlink and Tesla and bullet trains and uh, just Neuralink and all these amazing technologies that Mr. Musk has uh, decided to take upon himself to bring to the world. For which, don't get me wrong, I'm very grateful for. I'm very happy about these technologies. I am happy about what he is doing and definitely furthering humanity in these areas. Sure, there may be some negative consequences down the road, like, you know, hashtag conspiracy theory about potentially the Starlink system being able to control the weather. Then, like, you know, people are like, oh, that's just some big conspiracy theory. But then you realize that there, you know, as, as I was informed by an INFJ earlier today, that uh, there's this thing called cloud seeding, and apparently they did a report on it in the fourth grade. So that INFJ 
is 35 years old. So think about that. So they were what, nine, 10 when they did that report? So that's been around for at least 16, 17 years. So that could be potentially a problem, a huge potential issue. And a lot of people are just completely unaware of, uh, <laughs> of that problem. You know, people have been trying to, you know, do something for the weather, you know, do something to the weather, or man's been trying to control the weather for a long time. Anyway, segue, hashtag tangent. Let's get right back on track here. The point is, is that while INTPs are oftentimes in their life chasing their purpose, that definitely comes at the expense of their relationships. And that's why INTP relationships don't often last. It gets worse, like, especially if you read books like, um, for example, The Rational Mail. And there's sections within, I think, volume one and volume two of the rational male talking about, you know, male suicide and whatnot. And INTP men in particular are actually pretty high on the male suicide part, especially from their perspective, because it's like, Hey, I have supported you. I have given so much to you and you're just walking away from me and going to some other man, et cetera. Well, yeah, I mean, they're completely ignorant of women having development phase. They're completely ignorant of women having hypergamy. And hypergamy causes their tastes in men to actually change over time throughout their life, which is not a bad thing. It's actually, it's a good thing and it ensures the survival of the race as well as the quality of the race because women are ultimately the arbiters or the deciders as to, you know, which DNA actually makes it along to the next generation. If you think about it, there's more female DNA being passed down Nowadays, wasn't always that way, like in the Genghis Khan days, but nowadays, women are actually have much have a much larger legacy than men do. And, you know, INTP men in particular very much care about legacy because they're part of the body temple. It's all about what they're leaving behind. It's all about what they are, in effect, creating or improving humanity, etc., which is what Elon Musk is doing. Not a bad thing. The problem is, is that the deadly sin of gluttony can lead to the INTP being completely consumed in this area. Or at least it can lead them to being distracted. Distracted where, you know, an INTP man is not able to fulfill a woman, his woman's uh, hypergamous sexual strategy or her nature, basically. And this is why oftentimes NTJ women that they typically get into relationships with are moving on from them, you know. <laughs> To make matters worse, you know, their NI critic makes it difficult to reach growth because from their point of view, if they don't actually have purpose in life, oh crap, I guess that means I'm just going to be hedonistic. And INTPs are extremely hedonistic if they don't have purpose. And, you know, those career-minded NTJ women out there, they're not going to suffer that. But, I mean, let's look at the other way around. Like, look, what about INTP women, you know? Do you think at a successful INTJ or ENTJ man like, uh, like John Ferner, for example, the CEO of Walmart, do you think a man of his stature and a man of his quality is going to put up with an INTP wife who just lets her body go because she's more focused on on what? what? What is she focused on? Anything that matters? Her job? Oftentimes, INTP women put their job above everything else because, again, purpose. They draw their sense of purpose from the job and not their sense of purpose from their relationship with their man, which is ultimately what an NTJ man will come to expect eventually. And that could be that could be a problem. That could be a huge problem for a lot of relationships. But you know, here here we have the INTP, male or female, thinking that they're making it very easy on you know the people that they're in relationships with because they see themselves as extremely supportive, you know, their mate can just do whatever they want, you have full freedom, I'm going to stick around no matter what kind of a thing. Um, but they're really, really emphasizing, you know, for example, INTP men really, really emphasize, you know, relationship equity, their relationship investment is based on the beta side of beta male traits instead of alpha male traits. And in order to satisfy a woman's hypergamy, a man has to be able to do both simultaneously. 
And INTPs usually just aren't really built to do that in Western society because they often draw their sense of purpose from the things that they are consuming, like Star Trek Online, World of Warcraft, etc., or they are drawing it from, uh, let's see, um, <laughs> their job, right? And they end up becoming the biggest workaholics ever. And this just... It just leads so much lacking in their relationships, which causes people to ultimately no longer be interested in them. And it's really sad. It's very, very sad. It can continue to be a huge problem. So anyone, you know, take this as a warning. You know, if you're going to get into a relationship with an INTP, you're going to have to often compete with their sense of purpose in life. And, you know, the deadly sin, living virtue, and the other aspects of the body temple come into play, which could actually inhibit the relationship in as much as it could enrich the relationship. That being said, it is important to make sure that you're doing a little bit of supporting on their own. You know, it's really hard for INTPs, especially INTP men, to realize that their extroverted sensing user mates don't care about their relationship equity. Don't care about their relationship investment. They really don't care. And literally, they can walk out on the INTP at that given time. Even Tomasi said, you know, there's this one INTP who set himself on fire at the footsteps of the Capitol building in Washington, D.C. in a protest, basically killing himself because he thought his relationship equity mattered. This is typical for crusaders, especially ESFJs and INTPs who love to covert contract, and they often have covert contracts with life, and those covert contracts continue to be a problem, a huge problem, which really sucks because they actually think that they're doing something good by being so supportive because they imagine, hey, if I'm extra supportive and let them do whatever they want, that means... I get to do whatever I want. I get to consume as much as I want. So it ends up becoming this model of relationship that's geared towards shared consumption instead of shared growth. And then all of a sudden, the INTP ends up being stagnant, not going anywhere in their life, not able to get over their NI critic, not able to get over their addictions, because there is no one more addictive than an INTP. INTPs struggle with drug use. INTPs struggle with dopamine addiction. INTPs have all these insane struggles all the time, and it's so hard for them to let go. Because again, hedonism becomes the purpose of their life if they're not able to actually derive purpose uh, in their life from any other um, from any other source. And it becomes, well, very frustrating, like a huge problem. So... And then, you know, the people that they're in relationships with, ESFPs, with their vainglory, INTJs, with their vainglory, where they want people to revere them, but people can't revere them because then they look at you, the INTP, and they're like, oh, yeah, gross. That one's going nowhere. Well, that one's just a workaholic. That one's just putting their job above you. When they actually think that because they're working so hard, they're actually putting you above the job when that's not actually what's happening. Thank you, Extroverted Sensing Trickster, for being unaware of the really poor experience you're giving to other people. So this presents a huge problem. How do you actually get through this? Well, the eight rules for love are geared for INTPs in such a way to help arm you with dealing with this particular problem. Because... INTPs oftentimes, especially INTPs in Western society where our technology is so great and our ability to consume is so enabled, that INTPs oftentimes cannot get themselves out of this pit. They cannot get themselves out at all. And it becomes a huge problem like, and leads to more fatherlessness. It leads to just them being alone. It leads them to surrendering to their deadly sin of gluttony and consumption and consuming more than they produce. It doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman. They both do it. And they put that above anyone and everyone else for the rest of their life until eventually their gluttony consumes their life. 
and they die. And they die fat, weak, worthless, and just, just, they're gross. They're just really, really gross. And it sucks. It really sucks. They haven't, they haven't achieved any actual purpose because they made consumption their purpose. That's what really sucks about them. Hedonism. Hedonism becomes their god. Their idol that they worship. Because it's like, hey, what's the, pur- what's the point of life? What's the purpose of life if not to consume? Because they don't really have anything else to live for. And that's one of the challenges that they face on a daily basis. And you have to understand, when you're getting into a relationship with an INTP, they're bringing all that baggage to the table. I don't care which INTP it is. It's so ingrained into to their nature that it's something that you're going to have to compete with. I'm not saying that being in a relationship with an INTP is a bad idea. I'm not saying that you shouldn't give up. They're they're brilliant. In fact, second most brilliant out of us all. They uh, they actually can they can be high performers, achievers, capable businessmen, women, entrepreneurs. Steve Wozniak, for example, is one of the most outstanding technologists of our time. Yet, I mean, look at the guy. Is he healthy? No, no, he's not. There's so many people like him. I mean, Elon Musk. I mean, is Elon Musk really a healthy person? Think about that. Think about that. You know, like, yeah, he's able to accomplish all these great and amazing things. Sure. But how, how far, how far, I mean, what is it, what is it really worth, right? What is it really worth? You got, you got to think about it. So oftentimes their relationships are sacrificed on the altar of dopamine and consumption. And this can be a huge issue. So let's go to the eight rules for love. Big ass introduction there, you know, 24 minute long introduction because why not? This is C.S. Joseph talking. That's what we do here. So this is sad. It's a sad outcome. It's a very common outcome. But you being in a relationship with them, you might be able to get them (laughs) to mimic you if you yourself are a high achiever as an NTJ. So, it really comes down to a couple of things. You know, most of the time, INTPs aren't even accepted by people, which just allows them to not really actually derive purpose from their relationships. And as a result of that, they continue on this wheel, this endless wheel of consumption. You know, hashtag Robert Jordan, George R. R. Martin, and so on and so forth. Oh, my God. It's a huge issue. The gluttony can't stop. For some reason. Well, it's body temple. They need to understand that they can actually derive legacy from their relationships, right? It, it is actually possible. I mean, growth is really the purpose of life. The problem is, is that they often surrender their growth for the sake of consumption. That's what we're trying to avoid. But the eight rules. The eight rules. So, obviously... Their first function is introverted thinking hero, which can turn into a warrior over time, depending, you know, depending on where they're at with their growth or if they're immature or mature. Who knows? But here's the thing. Like, it's not good enough to just listen to an INTP, because if an INTP goes unchallenged in their life with their thinking, they will end up having an echo chamber in their own head. And that echo chamber will further support the consuming more so than producing, which can end up being, you know, that can end up causing or creating an even larger problem in terms of their level of consumption, okay? So it's not good enough to just listen to them or take what they say as gospel truth, etc. because even CI Hero can be mega prideful and end up listening to the sound of its own voice Instead of actually considering what's actually happening, because they have expert at sensing tricksters, so why would they change? They can be really comfortable in, <laughs> in the other crap in their life. They can be completely comfortable with that, which sucks. It sucks a lot. You don't want to be in a relationship with somebody like that. So really, you know, the first rule is about, you know, part of making them feel accepted just a little bit, but go up to the INTP and ask them what they think, like you have to initiate with them 
and ask them what they think. Because it's like, oh, okay, this person values me enough to actually ask what my thoughts are. The thing is, though, is that it's your responsibility that if you disagree with them, you tell them exactly why you disagree with them, and you give them things to think about. INTPs, they just don't change. You, you can't really change them. You really can't. Unless, of course, you're providing them overwhelming evidence as to why they're incorrect. Research, facts, sources, material, shove input down their throat. You have to force the input on them. Force them to hear other opinions. Otherwise, like I said, they're just going to walk around with this big freaking echo chamber, and then they're not actually going to grow as a person. Then your relationship with them is just going to fall apart. Why would you want to be in a relationship with somebody who is incapable of listening, for example, right? So to avoid that, I highly recommend, you know, yeah, ask them what they think, but then challenge what they think. It's not good enough to just take their word. Do not take their word at face value. They can, their, their TI hero is only based on, especially with expert sensing trickster, it is only based on what they have experienced already. What if they lack experience? What if They've, they, they, they've experienced something, never experienced something before, and they're telling you something, giving you a response to their TI hero that sounds true or that's truthy, but it's not actually based on fact because they don't, they're not seeking out new input. So it's your job to provide them with new input. Ask them what they think and then challenge what they think. Even if they are right, provide that challenge. You must challenge them even if they're correct because their TI hero must be sharp. Every hero function has a problem where it rests on its laurels. And especially since the INTP can get pretty lazy sometimes, their SI child can be stuck in their comfort zone, especially a comfort zone that's based on their thinking that they, and the same ego investments that they've had, the same thinking that they've had for so long, their whole life. You think that's going to change overnight? No. So you have to constantly shower them with new input. Hey, have you considered this? Hey, did you think about this? And then ask them what they think. Okay? Follow that process. That is the first rule. The second rule is <laughs> obviously make them feel wanted, etc., but also help them learn how to become more desirable. Every INTP out there needs fashion advice. They really do. As much as the INTPs on this channel within this community tell me and claim that, oh, I don't really need fashion advice. I got it all figured out. No, no, you actually don't. <laughs> they really don't. Teach them how to be more desirable to you. Okay? Tell them, like, yeah, I want you, but I would like to be able to want you in other ways, in other capacities. And new formats, and new clothes, and new environments, new, 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 new. I would like to be able to want you in these different situations. Help them create a system that supports them being desirable in certain social situations, in certain environments, etc. Majorly, majorly important. Because, again, if you do that, they're outside of their comfort zone. And they're not going to be so, you know, all of a sudden their consumption is not going to be all spent on them. Their consumption is actually going to be spent on you because all of a sudden your INTP husband of six years is going to be buying a suit for the first time in his life because he would like to go to classy places with him and tell him that's exactly what you want. Here's the thing. If you're not going to be direct with the INTP, and tell the INTP type what you want and why, well, they're not going to change. They're not just going to randomly wake up one day and all of a sudden they're a different person. You have to tell them what you want. You have to tell them what they can do to become more desirable for you and ultimately more desirable to other people, okay? Super important. This is especially important, like, for example, INTJs, they're vainglory. Vainglory, people like to be revered, right? Well, 
no one's going to revere you if you're bringing in an INTP who's got really poor fashion sense. And I'm just bagging on fashion as an example. But it's more than fashion. Like skills also matter. Skills that are outside of just computers. Does your INTP know how to fish? Do they know how to camp? You know, like there's more to life than just video games. There's more to life than Elden Ring. There's more to life than World of Warcraft. Okay. There's a lot of these issues that need to be understood and maintained. And oftentimes INTPs are just not equipped. But they will be motivated to get equipped if you're direct with them and you are direct in telling them what you want from them. You are setting up an INTP for failure if you do not tell them what you specifically want and why. You have to state why. Because they may be like, well, why do you want that? Or they'll be like, oh, I'm just going to dismiss that because the reason you want that is BS to me. And I don't care about that. Which, it's pretty lame if you actually think about but that, if you think about it, but that is actually a risk. That is actually something that happens. You know, TI Hero is great and all, but they can get super dismissive, very dismissive, especially when it comes to what other people want. So it's not good enough for you just to be direct and state what you want. You have to also state why you want it and ultimately what the outcome is going to be because you're training your INTP on how they can be more supportive for you. Oftentimes I see NTJ women, for example, just expecting with their SI trickster and their SI demon, just expecting the INTP to just know it's not going to work. You have to train your INTP man in some capacity. And NTJ men out there, if you're in a relationship with an INTP, you need to be willing to train your INTP woman. If you have a hard time with her physique, if you have a hard time with how she's dressed, for example, or how she pre presents herself, etc., call her out on it. Hold her accountable. That's the only way. That's really the only way. Rule number three, though, which is also probably one of the most important rules here. Forgive the uh, really horrible background noise right now. I'm trying to get away from this. But... Rule number three, do not enable their comfort zone. Do not enable the comfort zone. It is your job to expand their horizons and to stimulate exploration. That is rule three, stimulate exploration. They need to be doing new things all the time. Variety is the spice of life. You need to shove that variety down their throats, take their choice away, and literally force it on them. You need to force, force variety on your INTP. Like, it's, how are they going to actually even discover their life's purpose or any of their true passions unless you do this for them? Like, how is it even possible? Why would it even happen? Well, I tell you something. It won't happen. So drag them around and explore. And then eventually, like, if they're an ITP man, they'll be like, oh, well, I want to explore this. And then they'll take you along. They'll share exploration with you. So really, rule three is all about creating an environment or a relationship centered around shared exploration of new things. Because by doing so, it prevents the stagnation. It prevents them consuming more than they produce because all of a sudden they have to produce more to be able to sustain the exploration. Exploration is absolutely key, especially if your INTP doesn't already know their life purpose. But even if they do know their life purpose, there's still a risk that they're gonna put that purpose above you. Keeping a ritual of variety, a ritual centered around, a ritual within your relationship, so centered around new things and exploring new things and doing new things, that they've never done before, whether or not you've already done it before or not, it doesn't matter. It's important. It's absolutely key. Otherwise, they'll continue to consume the things that they've done. An INTP is very okay, out of all the 16 types, doing the same thing over and over and over again for the rest of their life without changing. That comfort zone ends up becoming the number one, mind you, the number one threat to your relationship with the INTP. Make sure 
that you are shoving down variety down their throats so that your relationship will actually have a chance, okay? Very, very important. Rule number four, be very accepting towards your INTP. They're very afraid of people not accepting them. The problem is if you accept them too much, they'll get used to it. And then they'll end up having an expectation, an unfair expectation of acceptance from you to them. This can cause a lot of problems as well. You want to avoid that. Because then you're at risk of enabling them. They have this bad habit of enabling other people in their life. And then they end up having a covert contract with the people they enable because then they end up expecting others to enable them. To enable their gluttony. To enable consuming more than producing. I don't know how many INTJ women I have coached because of their failed INTP men only for me to tell the INTJ women Hey, by the way, the reason your silver pair failed is because you actually enabled their comfort zone. You enabled their acceptance. You are too accepting of their behavior. And instead of withdrawing when you should have, you let it go on and on and on to the point your SI demon became bitter and then it went on and on and on to the point where you actually couldn't deal with your own hypergamy anymore and ended up cheating on your INTP husband or boyfriend, etc. This is a consistent problem, very consistent problem. And the relationship coaching that I do, especially geared towards INTJ women, this probably comes up six, seven out of 10 times. Because for some reason, majority of my INTJ female clients are with in relationships with INTP men, mostly because they're afraid of their freedom being taken away and the INTP has this laissez-faire approach to relationships oh yeah sure honey you could do whatever you want you don't want a baby you don't have to have a baby you know you don't want to when it's really you know the INTJ's vainglory that's actually getting in the way of them becoming a mother which could be a problem so and I've seen that happen before I mean shoot that's like <laughs> my father-in-law's entire life his mother was a very abusive INTJ, and his mother ended up hating him because he would get in the way of her vainglory, basically, and she blamed him for her lacking happiness. Oh, you ruined my body. Oh, you, you know, it, it is a horrible situation. I don't recommend it. I'm not saying INTJs are perfect. They got problems too, you know. But beyond that, you know, like INTPs, like, yeah. Give them acceptance, that acceptance they crave. They're so afraid of not being liked by other people, they need to be liked. But you can't just give it all to them. You can't say, like, okay, no matter what, I accept you. You can't do that. You have to have your own boundaries. You have to have your own self-respect. It's so hard for NTJs to figure out what their boundaries actually are because they have SI trickster and they have SI demon and it just... You know, NJs in general, especially because NJs are usually the ones who get in relationships with INTPs, they all have a hard time with boundaries and setting boundaries. And either they have really hard boundaries that are just ridiculous, or they don't have any boundaries at all. So it's important to make sure that you set a personal boundary for yourself so that you're not enabling your INTP. Do not enable them. Yes, state that you accept them. Yes, state that you like them. State that you value them. But you also have to make it very clear why you value them and show them that you would value them more if they, you know, make themselves more desirable, if they're putting their efforts in the right places, or if, that, if they are going to consume, that they're doing shared consumption with you, that they're exploring new things and not doing the same thing over and over and over again. I'm sorry, but if you're like, it doesn't matter who you are. If you're in a relationship with an INTP, variety is your responsibility until they learn to explore and bring and have a habit of bringing in more variety, more exploration within the con within within their own life on their own and willfully do it. The only reason why why how they would do that or even reach that conclusion is because they've turned it into a habit. And the only way it's going to become a habit is if you do that with them and force that on them over and over and over again. Rule three. 
The problem is, is that oftentimes they get so stuck in their comfort zone and INTJs, especially, it doesn't matter, men or women, when they're in relationships with INTPs, they're so afraid of rejection that they end up allowing the INTP to walk all over them. And then they end up leaving the INTP. And what I mean by walk all over them, walking all over them by bit, by stagnating, walking all over them by having a lack of variety, walking all over them by not exploring new things, walk all over them by just being a stone that doesn't change or grow within the context of their life. That's a huge problem. And it is consistent. It's consistent across every INTP out there until, of course, they mature enough to have a habit, a healthy habit of exploration, okay? Again, do not enable them. That's rule four. State that you like them, but state that you value them and make it very known, make it very plain, but state why and state that you would value them more if they would observe, you know, if you, if you would observe, uh, you know, rule three, for example, you know, that's important. Rule number five, it's kind of like a little bit of a tack on for uh, rule number one. But if you're going to provide input to the INTP, you better be well researched. You better actually be taking no shortcuts with your research. You should be going out of your way to make sure that everything that you're sharing with them, everything that you're telling them is accurate or at least well researched. They need, they, they're, they're so worried about you. It doesn't matter what type you are. They're so worried about you getting the wrong idea about them or getting any wrong idea that could potentially make them really uncomfortable, okay? And already, if they're in a relationship with you, you already make them comfortable. But they're just so worried that one day you're going to read the wrong thing or you're going to be bringing some bad ideas into the relationship or cause problems for them as a result of improper thinking. What if you get mega paranoid? They're getting paranoid based off of wrong information. The thing is, though, is that if you're an NJ, you really can't be trusting your own ideas that much when you're in a relationship with an INTP, which means, remember, all of your ideas are subject to their review. But how would they know that if you're not even going to bother sharing your ideas with them to begin with? So rule number five is submit to review. Submit to the INTP's review of your thinking. And make sure that your thinking is backed up with research and facts and information and sources that you can share so that they understand that at a minimum, your beliefs are based on solid research. That way, they never have to feel like they have to compete with a belief system that would ultimately make them feel unsafe or uncomfortable. Okay, that's a major, major issue. I don't know how many times I've coached NJs. To get them to realize it's, it's especially an ENFJ problem, more so than like an INTJ problem. ENFJ is like they end up getting this idea and they just run with it, much to the INTP chagrin. And they never even spoke to their INTP about the specific idea they had or the decisions that they're making. You have to factor in the INTP and any decision that you make needs to be ran by the INTP's review stand, a.k.a. their TI hero. So you have to go to them before you make a decision, okay, and share the reasons, your reasoning behind why you're making a certain decision and figure that out. If you're not willing to do that, you're literally going to create disloyalty or they're just going to retreat and withdraw to their comfort zone and just stay away from you. And they're going to stagnate and they're not going to grow anymore, which is just going to frustrate you. And then you're probably going to end up breaking up with them or leaving them or cheating on them in some capacity, even though it was actually your fault to begin with. Don't do that to them. It's not fair. And they can be pretty vengeful too. They have a nasty habit of pulling out their support structure out from under people at random to prove a point. Be like, hey, you wouldn't get anywhere in your life if it weren't for me in this area. I'm going to pull all my support and see if you can stand on your own two feet. Oh, that's right. You can't. INTPs have a very, very good habit of becoming the foundation that you walk upon within your life because there's that supportive and they're such a great problem solver. They can solve all those problems. But are you sure you can handle them withdrawing the support? Well, guess what? The fastest way that you can get them to withdraw support is if you start making decisions without them reviewing them, without, without them having an opportunity 
to share their thoughts on decisions that you're making to the point where, especially if you're a woman, you need to be willing to submit to your INTP man's thinking. It's very important. But again, it doesn't matter what your gender is. Both, it still ends up being a problem for that TE nemesis. It's a huge issue. Huge issue. You know, rule number six. Oh my God, it's almost impossible to motivate them. They really, really can't be motivated. It's not your job to motivate them, so don't. Basically, rule six is don't try to motivate the INTP. Don't give the INTP choices. Just tell them what you want. Don't don't expect them to want anything. Don't expect them to have any drive. They'll be driven if they see you're driven. And if you're driven towards exploration and doing new things, if you're driven towards uh, variety, then all of a sudden they're motivated because they see you are being motivated. And then eventually that'll lead them to having a habit of being motivated for the sake of exploration, for the sake of finding what their purpose is in life, basically, because you are motivated. But don't force them to make choices. Don't give your INTP so many choices. Just tell them what you want. It's okay to tell them what you want. Now, if you're a fellow SI user and you're not really able to tell them what you want, maybe you shouldn't be in a relationship with them. And INTPs, if you're in a relationship with an SI user, I suggest stopping that relationship or at least negotiating with that person so that you can have a relationship with an NI user on the side so that you can draw their claims of desire and their wants, basically, so that you yourself can be motivated in your life all of a sudden. It's much easier for an INTP to be motivated to do things if their lover is motivated to do things first and foremost. Gosh, the wind out here is absolutely terrible, and I'm going to change my physical location to deal with this wind. Oh, my goodness. There's a spot down there. I'm going to walk very quickly to get out of the wind. This is ridiculous. So, anyway... I guess that's what I get for walking on top of the bridge, right? I guess that's what I get. So keep that keep that in mind. Keep that like stop trying to give them choices. Don't don't give them choices. That's that's rule six. I mean, if you want to further demotivate them, shower them in a lot of options. Be like, hey, do you want to do you want to go here? Do you want to go there? Do you want do you want stop saying that? Just just don't. Just don't. To be like, hey, I want to go over here, or I want to go over here. What do you think? Do it that way. Change your language appropriately. Make it very clear. Make it very clear what you want. Make it very clear. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't be hard at all to do that. Make it very clear. Ah, no wind. Much better. I'm kind of hiding from the wind right now. So, yeah. Uh, rule number seven. Make sure you're always helping them with their outward appearance. Make sure that you're constantly helping them understand how they could be presentable to other people. And the actual rule itself, help your INTP become impressive to other people and to leave a good lasting impression. They really, really need this, especially because they're afraid of other people's acceptance or people not liking them or people not accepting them with their extroverted feeling inferior. If you help them become more presentable, if you help them uh, go out of the way to leave a really good uh, first impression and make it a habit, an objective, an outcome for them to leave a good first impression with other people, people will want them, people will like them, it makes them more likable, and it just doesn't even occur to them. You, especially since you're statistically likely an NJ in a relationship with your INTP, if you are not working towards that end, you are failing them. And you are actually sabotaging your own relationship by inhibiting them or not helping them or training them on how they can leave a better, long-lasting first impression on people. It's mega important. It's, 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 I, I can't stress it enough because they need to understand that if they leave good impressions on other people, it creates opportunities for them later. Maybe opportunities for them to consume. Maybe opportunities uh, for them to, um, to explore, opportunities that provide 
variety, opportunities to provide better jobs, for example, or meeting new people or getting additional skills or people to go camp with. It doesn't matter. They just have to learn how to give a really good first impression. Help them do that. Help them dress properly. Help them talk properly. Help them learn charisma, skills, like social skills, super mega important. If they're like an INTP man, buy them the Rational Mail, Volume 5. Tell them to read it and do that all the time because that literally is a man's guide to having basic social skills. Even though most people think it's a pickup artist book. No, it's not. It's a social skill book. They need to read it. Seriously. It's an INTP woman. Help them understand what it is to be more feminine. Help them understand what it is to be a better woman, basically. You know, submissive, demure, respectful, those kinds of things. Leave good first impressions on people in your life as their NJ man, for example, or if you're like an SFP, an SFP man as well. Especially, you know, SFPs, like they really want, like ESFPs want other people to revere them. So they take their reputation very seriously. ISFPs are afraid that other people don't think that they're stupid or don't think that they're good people or that they think less of them or that they're talking about them behind their back. Well, they're gonna that that's gonna be intensified if the INTP is not able to give a long lasting good first impression on other people. And yeah, I'm sure the INTP would argue, well, that's just me being fake. Well, the reality of the situation is uh, all social interaction is a form of manipulation, which means all social interaction at its surface is technically shallow and fake to begin with. They have to learn basic social skills, okay? And the best social skill that you can help them learn is leaving a good first impression. That's rule seven. And rule eight, do not ask them what they value. It'll probably take them their whole life to figure out what it is they actually value. But don't, don't, don't even bother asking them, don't ever ask an INTP what they like. They wanna know what you like. So always share with the INTP what you like and what your priorities are. And then all of a sudden they will have their own priorities, but their priorities will be based around your priorities. Now, this kind of sucks because for INTP men, because in order to be masculine, they have to learn how to put self above tribe. They have to put their priorities above everyone else. The problem is they don't know what their priorities are and they're not gonna develop priorities unless they're around other people. The problem is, is that they're often in their laboratory or in their basement and they don't have those social skills and they're not able to be around other people enough and see what other people's priorities are so that they have a hard time cherry picking other people's priorities, much less your priorities within the relationship. Make sure you are constantly sharing your priorities with them and exposing them to other people who are above them in stature so that they can see what those people's priorities are so that they realize that, hey, I could be more successful. I could be more gluttonous. I could be more consumptive. I, I could have and experience all these new things and explore more in life and gain more benefit from exploration because I might have more money and more talent as a result of being around people with better priorities than mine because they're going to learn how to adopt those priorities. So rule number eight is don't ask them what their priorities are. Don't even tell them that they have to have priorities or likes or certain things. All you have to do is share your priorities or get people who are above them in stature to share their priorities so the INTP can learn how to adopt those priorities. And then slowly over time throughout their life, after they've developed healthy habits, the INTP will figure out, oh, hey, this is actually a priority. And then what few priorities they have, they'll take those priorities with them to the grave. And oftentimes you'll see that they are a priority adopter. If you are not facilitating opportunities for your INTP to adopt new priorities, you are failing them, okay? You have to be there for them in this way. It's all about exposure. They need to be exposed to new things and new people. That's why they need social skills and able to give a good first impression, right? It's super mega important. Because here's the, here's the situation, folks. If you don't follow these eight rules, if you don't follow these eight rules to the letter, you know what's gonna happen? They're going to become ultimately unhappy. They're just going to give up. Their anti-critic makes it very easy for them to give up. They're just gonna throw up their hands. 
They're just going to give up. They're going to give up on life and they're going to surrender themselves to their comfort zone. The comfort zone of hedonism, the comfort zone of dopamine addiction, to drug addiction, addiction to pornography, whatever they can get their hands on to increase their dopamine because hedonism or dopamine addiction, because they're the same thing, literally becomes their life. And that's all there is to life to these people. Their SE trickster is completely unaware of the world around them. They just need to explore. That's their main need. So get them out there and explore. And the thing is, they got to be willing to explore and share their explorations with someone that they love. The thing is, though, is that if you're not meeting these rules, why are they actually going to do it? They're going to be ill-equipped. Do you think any INTP man is ever going to actually learn social skills? The people that are supposed to learn social skills is fellow men. But if they're stuck in their mother's basement or in their laboratory all the time or on the job or at work, how are they going to explore? You have to get them to a situation where they are socializing constantly to adopt proper values, to have better habits. And if you're taking that away from them, what are they going to do? They're just going to default to the comfort zone of hedonism, which is going to cause you to hate them. But you're not following the eight rules, which is causing you to hate them. So your hatred of them and you breaking up with them and you betraying them and you moving on from them. It's actually your fault. You see what I'm saying? It's not, it's, not, it's not necessarily always their fault. Because here's the reality of the situation. INTPs, do you think they really know different? In Western society, I tell you the truth, they really don't. They don't know different. They think they do, but they really don't. And that's the problem, folks. INTPs are often victims of their own paradigm and victims of their own minds. If you want to have a long-lasting, amazing, heartfelt, passionate, fulfilling relationship with an INTP, you have to go out of your way to get them out of that comfort zone and expose them, expose them to new things and get them to habitually explore new things and especially new people in their life. If you don't do this, you will not be fulfilled in your relationship with them. They will just withdraw from you and be hedonistic and put their hedonism above you, which will cause you to not want to be with them anymore. When in reality, guess what? It was your fault because you're the one. You're the one who decided to not give them what they needed in a relationship to begin with because you decided to not follow the eight rules for love. Wow. You end up sabotaging your relationship with the INTP. Congratulations. You played yourself. Is that really how you want to live life? Is that really how you want things to go with your INTP? I am so tired of dealing with this situation in coaching. I, it happens at least, oh my gosh, at least. I mean, it used to be like once a month. Now it's like once every two months. Once every 60 days, I have a case like this, and it's just like, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. And I'm like, I'm an NTP. I need some variety. I mean, oh my God, like you people are continuing to repeat the same problems over and over. Please stop. Please stop. Follow the eight rules for love, please. Give INTPs what they need. Force INTPs to have what they need so that you can actually have a fulfilling relationship with them so that you don't break up with them so that they end up becoming a great person, maybe even a person even greater than Elon Musk. Even Elon Musk definitely has his hangups for sure, you know, as an INTP. But seriously, they're brilliant. They could be contributing and supporting the world and humanity in major, major ways, like Gene Watt Roddenberry or uh, Steve Wozniak, right? They're also INTPs. Albert Einstein, he's an INTP. Look at these great men, for example, you know, there's tons of opportunities out there, but they're not even going to know what those opportunities are unless you follow the eight rules. And the thing is, what's worse is that you're going to not. And if you don't follow the eight rules, you're setting them for failure. They end up failing and then you end up judging them and then you end up punishing them by breaking up with them or betraying them in a relationship anyway. When in reality the situation, it was all their fault. And you wonder why they're so vengeful towards you after the fact. You wonder why. Look at yourself in the mirror. Take responsibility. Don't worry. They have to take responsibility too. I mean, once they understand how these eight rules work, they're like, oh crap, yeah, you're right. 
I do have a hedonism problem. Yeah, yeah, they absolutely do. But this is how you help them deal with it. This is how you help them grow and become the man or woman that you dream them of being or what they were at first within the beginning of your relationship. Go in this direction, and I promise you amazing results. If you found this lecture useful, helpful, educational, or enlightening, please leave a comment below here on the uh, YouTube channel or on the podcast. I read every comment. Uh, hopefully, uh, this will help you guys your relationships with INTPs. And hopefully, you INTPs can better understand yourselves as a result. Please like and subscribe, too. We could use more subscribers and uh, definitely some likes. And, uh, yeah, hopefully uh, this uh, lecture ends up being super mega meaningful, as I hope they all are. So. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys tonight.